Oh, yeah. Happy Friday, everyone. Today, we'll be talking about advanced schema markup for SEO with our very special guest today, Terry Sanders. He is the founder of Saltera and the coordinator of SEO Spring Training, which just recently passed. Heard a lot of good things about it. Friday, y'all. Let me know where you're watching from. Don't be shy. Say hi in the live chat. We're going to be talking about some great things today. Schema. Some advanced schema. Stefan, my man. Hi, everyone. Happy Friday. If y'all didn't know, I believe Terry was able to rank web pages. With no content and schema only. So I want to learn more about that and see how he did that and see what schema is important. If you're just tuning in, we'll be having Terry Samuels, the founder of Saltera and SEO Spring Training, and talking about advanced schema markup for SEO. I see a few of you out there already. Don't be shy. Say hi in the live chat. Dre, what's up, Victor? <laughs> oh, yeah, my man, Brian. Schema bombs coming all the way. Hell yeah. Whoops. <laughs> Wrong button there. Let me, let me get you that knowledge bomb out there. There we go. About seven and a half more minutes to go. We've got a great episode today. We'll be talking about advanced schema markup for SEO with a very special guest, Terry Samuels. Emmanuel, hello. We've got an early party going on here. Lovely to see everyone ready for some advanced schema for SEO. If you didn't know, um, Terry has ranked pages with schema alone with very little content or no content so we want to talk about that and see how he did that be sure to get your shouts out get your questions ready happy friday y'all let me know where you're watching from Where's our man Hobby? I haven't seen Hobby in a while. So we're we'll talking about event schema and some siloing. So Terry is very knowledgeable on siloing as well. So we're going to talk about schema, site siloing, how they work together. Some good stuff today. Any of you attend SEO Spring Training? Let me know how it was. It happened, I believe, about a couple weeks ago. Maybe a little longer, but it used to be past. I know the videos are available. If you missed it, you can purchase those. Guys, we got about less than five more minutes to go. We're still waiting for Terry to come in the back. Let me make sure. Go, 
Kobe, my man, yo, yo, yo. Talking about advanced schema markup for SEO with a very special guest today, Terry Samuels. Let me find him on Skype just in case. Yo, Jeremy, my man, happy Friday. Guys, we are talking to Terry Samuels, the founder of Saltera and the SEO Spring Training Conference. And we'll be talking about event schema markup and siloing. Don't be shy, guys. Let me know where you're watching from. From Seattle, hello. Luther, hi. By the way, I've learned so much from the SEO 2020 book. Almost done. Query Hunter plugin and learning more about Google Discover and so much more. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. I see Terry in the background. Let me see if you can hear me. Terry, can you hear me? I can. All right. I can hear you. I see you just fine. Looking good. Sound good. All right. So I'm going to go. We have about two more minutes for the countdown. And I'm going to go ahead and like go over a few videos in the very beginning and about eight minutes after 12 my time i'll go ahead and induce you in okay perfect all right guys we have terry in the back today we'll be talking about advanced schema markup for seo and some siloing if you don't know who terry is he is the founder of saltera and the founder of the seo spring training conference let me know if you've been there i heard it was a great conference this past year and every year less than a minute and a half to go get your shouts out get your questions ready say hi in the live chat let me know where you're watching from Terry and Dre. <laughs> Yasmin, hello. All right, guys, we got about 30 more seconds to go. I'm going to go ahead and start winding this music down. And Terry, I'm going to go ahead and put you on mute for now, and then I will unmute you when I end this show. Perfect. All right. Yeah, yeah. 
Hey, time to get it started, no delay, let's work. Wanna see you be an SEO expert. Paul Andre Devera, steady dropping knowledge. Over 15 years in the game, so he knows all about it. Master the art of SEO, you will be amazed. Time to get your brand off page to on page. Dropping knowledge, legendary for sure. Whether you're just getting started, a self-employed entrepreneur. Yeah, let's go. Subscribe to the SEO video show. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to another episode of the SEO Video Show, where SEO is alive and fun. My name is Paul Andre Devera, aka Dre, and I curate SEO videos released in the past week into about one minute clips. My favorite part of the show is when I get to introduce my guest, and my guest this week is the founder of Salterra and SEO Spring Training Conference, Terry Samuels. Before we get started, let's say what's up to everyone in chat. I see Luther, Hannah, Jeremy, Kobe, Manuel, Brian, Stefan, Maddox, Victor, and Anastasia, Yasmin. Hello, hello. Thank you for coming. Please support the channel by liking and subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Now let's get on with the show. Hey Dre, what kind of fruit do SEOs like best? Low hanging fruit. <laughs> Google I.O. was this past week and they gave a sneak peek at what's next for AI and Google search. Let's check this one out. Talk like whoa. Yes, yes. dog a sandwich and the answer is yes no yes no <laughs> all right man some great stuff coming out from google i mean i noticed that in that video that they were recommending a lot of questions to ask and topical maps i think will be more important than ever Okay, I know many of us have already uh, been using questions queries in our SEO strategy, but it looks like it may be more critical to provide those quality answers with experiences. Okay, at Google I.O., they also announced the rollout of perspectives. You'll see a perspective filter appear at the top of the search results, uh, and then when you tap on the filter, you'll see exclusive, see long or short form videos, images, and um, written posts from what people shared on like discussion boards like Reddit, Quora, and uh, other social media platforms. So you may want to step your game up on reddit quora youtube tiktok and blog commenting game okay regarding regarding topical maps matt diggity shares his method for creating one in his recent video this past week let's check this one out so the name of the game will be who can figure out everything that needs to be written in a given niche this is called creating a topical map here's how to create one using the protein powder niche as an example Go to answerthepublic.com, type in your topic, and get a head start with 100 or so topics. Type your keywords into Google itself and get tons of topics from the People Also Ask feature. You can use a tool like SEO Minion to download hundreds of them in a single shot. Go to the bottom of the search result and pull tons more topics by clicking around and exploring the related searches. And leverage the Google search bar's autocomplete function to get even more topics. Here's where the gold is. Look at your competitors to see what kind of topical coverage got them to the top of Google. I said this a million times before, the answer to SEO is always written on page one. How do you do that? You dig through their sitemap and do a search for your keyword. Other golden sources include Ahrefs Questions Report as well as Google's NLP API. Then when you're done, remove duplicates and put your long list of results through a keyword clustering tool like Keyword Cupid, which is going to organize what topics need to be written in the same articles as opposed to separate articles. Matt will be a guest on the show in about a month, so be sure to hit that notification bell to get the alert. How to get social media links on your Google business profile by Darren Shaw. Let's check this one out. 
the number one place that Google looks to make these connections is your website. So make sure that you have the links prominently placed in either the header or the footer. For example, this site is linking to them in the header and the footer. And for good measure, they even put the links in the middle of the page. If you're linking with icons, as most people do, uh, make sure you add descriptive text to the alt attribute of the image. And you can see an example of that on this site here uh, on their Facebook. It says Duchess Bake Shop on Facebook, Duchess Bake Shop on Instagram. That's coming from the alt attributes. The next thing I suggest is to add local business schema with the same as attribute on the page that your Google business profile is linking to. For most businesses, that's the home page. So schema markup is a little bit technical. I like to use this tool at technicalseo.com to generate the schema. So with this generator, you can just enter uh, your business name, your business information. It also has this really great button where you can just press it. Like after you've entered your address, you can just press that. It'll generate your coordinates and you can see the schema markup showing up here on the side. And so here they have a section for adding the same as markup for the social media profile. So I can click this, go Facebook, enter the URL, add the next one, I'll do YouTube. And you can see them showing up over here. All right, we'll be talking more about event schema today with our very special guest. Nathan Gott shares why the ultimate goal for SEO is revenue. Let's check this one out. Your overall SEO strategy, you should be focused on the bottom of the funnel and then working your way up to the informational. Just, just getting traffic is not the goal. The goal is to drive conversion. So focus on the bottom of the funnel and support your bottom of the funnel keywords and naturally you're going to end up targeting informational, you know, informational keywords, but the point is just the mentality. You're focusing on the keywords that actually drive revenue. All right. Kevin Indig spends on uh, Nathan's got Nathan's idea uh, on optimizing for MU. Let's check this one out. You want to go after high intense, low volume keywords, right? So you want to go after longer tail keywords that have modifiers like buy or get or uh, sign up, you know, the, these kind of, uh, queries and they typically have lower search volume, but you want to start there just so you can, you can be present at the bottom of the funnel. And then from there, you want to move your way up to the top of the funnel. So there's obviously middle of the funnel where people might compare different products. So after the buy modifier, you go after compare modifier, and then you go after the top of the funnel. And for companies who have been running for a while, the first step that I always do, and I always do this with my clients is to look at what pages drive conversions and what keywords do they rank for? And then as a first step, can we just improve the ranks of these keywords? Can we just improve the organic traffic that we drive to these pages? That is the, the number one step. All right, this brings me to my favorite part of the show. Please ask questions and I will address them in the order that they receive. Please support the channel while I get things ready here. Terry's the owner of Saltero Digital Web Services. He's the host of the Spring Training and owner of Roundtable SEO Mastermind Series. He has spoken at conferences over the last four years, including SEO Spring Training, SEO Rockstars, and SEO Mastery Summit. He has over 12 years experience in digital marketing. He's an authority in technical SEO, site structure, and schema, and international internal audits. Please welcome Terry Samuels. Jerry, my man, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I need that video. I need that video when you get done. <laughs> love it, love <laughs> it, everyone. Let's give a round of applause for Terry. <laughs> and, and Terry, I, I mean, I was, I heard you had a great success at the SEO Spring Training this past, uh, was it a couple weeks ago? Was it a few weeks ago? Yep, yep, a couple weeks ago it ended. Yeah, it was, uh, it was awesome. It was better than we expected. And um, yeah, I'm still humbled. Just, uh, you know, two or three weeks after it. So, yeah, it's very nice. Love it, love it. So, I mean, um, I actually bought tickets by, back in 2020. And I was my first time I was ever going to go to, like, go to live conference. And then we had, like, ah, that whole thing happened. And we had to, like, you know, shut it down. And uh, maybe we actually did it um, online. But, man, I was so hyped to go. And all that thing happened. So, one of these days, one of these days, I'll be there. 
Yeah, that's I hope. Yeah, come next year. It's going to be in April again. Um, we're already starting to finalize, you know, all the different variables and getting ready to go out and um, start figuring out how to do speakers this year. We had 84 people want to speak this year. So Ooh. I'm going to I'm going to break that out a little bit differently this year. <laughs> Love There's it, a lot man. of work trying to figure out who, who was going to speak and who wasn't. So. Love it. I would love to talk about that more, but hold on. Let's rewind this real quick. Jerry, take us way back. Way back from, what was that, 12 years ago? When did you first um, get into SEO? Um, I got in, involved in SEO. I'm a software developer, and I um, when I lost my real estate business, I started doing websites again. Um, of course, HTML, CSS, you know the old fashioned way, mm -hmm. um, with Dreamweaver. And so I started, just started building websites for my church and some people around my church. And then, um, it started getting into one of the people from my church owned a charity and I did the website for them. And then they actually contacted me to look at this SEO thing they were mm -hmm. paying for. And I was like, okay, well, I didn't know anything about SEO. Obviously there wasn't much and there wasn't anything in YouTube or Facebook or anything. So, I just started kind of digging into it. And back then it was all about buying links, you know, and you didn't really pay attention to what links you were buying. You were just buying links. Um, and then the first Google animal came out and this client happened to get hit with the, um, the, what was it? Penguin, I think was the yeah. first one. Or Panda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, one of the first animals came out. She got smacked, um, lost everything as far as rankings of anything that she was already getting. So I actually learned from the, getting a website out of penalty mm. um, SEO rather than helping somebody rank. So um, when it happened to her, I was just doing whatever kind of investigation I could find. I was, you know, I found some patents, you know, found a couple of people to follow um, the Callan brothers, you know, of course, Rand Fishkin's whiteboard Fridays, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that was, you know, back when Facebook started, but um, yeah, it was a whole different game trying to figure things out back then. And, um, so anyway, I had her and then I had an insurance agent come up to me, um, happened to be a friend and said, Hey, I, can you help me with this? I know you're just getting started. You know, I'll pay you a couple hundred bucks a month. And, you know, so I did it and got him ranking and he was, he was my client until he sold his business like a year ago, still paying me a couple oh. hundred bucks. A month. So, <laughs> I love it. Love it. Um, but yeah, that's basically how I got started. I was kind of, I tell people I was kind of forced into it. Mm -hmm. I really didn't have any desire into it. I like software development. I liked, you know, coding and stuff like that. But then once I got more into SEO that I could figure out that my technical stuff can work for SEO. So that's why I kind of just fell, you know, just kind of jumped in with both feet and took two of my kids with me. So two of my boys. Oh, me I love it. And then. My wife and my daughter run the web design, graphic design side. Oh, that's awesome. A whole family business going on right there. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so I wanted to get in. This is the first question I actually asked. Um, I forgot to ask this, but this is one first question I always ask all my SEO professionals that come on here. It's like, in one minute or less, how was, does Terry get ranking on page one of Google? On page. Nail your on page. And it's I'm a big, huge on pager. Um, I'll fight tooth and nail with people that want to fight between backlinks and on page. Um, but I believe if you're on page is on point, you're going to rank might take a while, but you know, the, the, I think the backlinks obviously, ex, you know, accelerate that ranking. Um, but yeah, I, I do believe on pages, if you're going to learn this business, you better be good at on page. Love it. Love it. Okay. So back to, back to like onto how, you know, when you first got into SEO and you know, you said you're kind of like, it was forced onto you because of what you're doing already. But I mean, like why continue with it? Why, why, what made you so interested in it and stay, stick with it for like, you know, the next 12 years or so? Um, I think it's just because I like to see people succeed. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a passion for helping people. I always have and all the businesses I've had. Um, mm -hmm. I think SEO is cool just because you can see, you know, you can see rankings increase, you can see traffic increase, you can see phone calls and conversions increase. And then you take it one step further and you help the business owner actually learn how to close those sales, learn how to actually, you know, pre-qualify people, you know, mm -hmm. how to do stuff more from a business consultant side, which I love, just kind of the one step further saying, okay, you have all these leads now, why are you missing 50% of the calls? Mm -hmm. You know, why is your salespeople giving prices over the phone? You know, I mean, there's all kinds of variables now you get into actually helping the business succeed 
to where you just kind of take, you take that step out of SEO into another realm of saying, look, I'm here just to help your business. You know, so that's kind of what we do. So I, I don't My strategy calls aren't about rankings. We very rarely talk about rankings. Love that. Love that. Okay. So take us to your, um, your, 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 um, your agency right now, Sol Solterra, and like, how, how does it work? So like how, I mean, you do websites, is it a whole package deal when come, someone comes to you? Do you like the website first and then you like, kind of upsell like SEO? Uh, is yeah, well, typically um, we market for web design mm -hmm. um, because I think that, I think marketing okay. for web design is not only is it a easier sale than it is talking to somebody that's had three or four SEO companies, he spent thousands of dollars and not seeing anything. So, um, so we definitely go after the web design side very aggressively and then, I basically pick and choose of who comes in on that side of who I want to even talk to for, we call it phase two. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm pretty solid in medical spas. I'm pretty solid in home services. I, I, I take on a couple lawyers, but I'm very stringent about taking on lawyers, you know, especially personal injury lawyers. Mm -hmm. Why? So I, I turn, I turn away more people than I take just because I just, I'm a non-drama guy. <laughs> you know, I, I don't, I don't deal with it well. And, you know, I don't deal with it, you know, it people, if there's mm -hmm. a, if they have a computer company on staff that I got to go through to make changes, I'm, I'm not your guy. So yeah, there's, there's, there's different ways that we go about it, but I, you know, again, I'm in a position to be able to do that. Yeah. You know, when I started like everybody else, I was taking anybody that called, I didn't yeah. care if it was a dress shop or a plumber or a, you know, tree service. You know, but I quickly learned that because we don't throw everything into the same box, which I don't believe in, but we quickly learned that our processes and our SOPs became a mess. And so um, we kind of niched down before COVID and I was solely into medical spas. Um, COVID hit, I lost 27 medical spas in oh, six yeah. weeks. Um, so I, I tell people niching down is awesome, but be careful <laughs> for yeah. the unexpected by COVID. Um, but you know, but it's still, you know, it's just kind of the, I have the exception now of being able to pick and choose who I want to work with. I do a lot of white label. Um, white label is probably my favorite um, just because I get to teach the SEO agencies how mm -hmm. to do this. So hopefully that I'm not their white label person forever, mm -hmm. but um, some of them just want to sell. Some of them just want to do websites. That's fine. But um, you know, it's just, I don't know. I, I have a passion for teaching people this business and, um, and just kind of, I don't know. I do a lot of audits and I find a lot of things people do. And I just, I shake my head, you know, what are you thinking? You know, type of thing, you know? mm -hmm. um, and so it's, you know, when I go in and I look at a client base or I look at somebody I'm taking on for a client, you know, it's gotta be a team effort. You know, I'm not the guy that you just hire and never hear from for months on end. You know, I, yeah. I have strategy calls every month. If you miss the second month, you're fired. Oh. Um, I'm that serious about being on the same page with my clients. So um, I don't like the phone calls like anybody else does. It says, Hey, Terry, I haven't heard from you for in a while. I'm going to go a different direction. My, my brother's sister's mom's going to do my SEO for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, but no, I just, I think this is a team effort game. This is a team game. This isn't just Terry, the SEO guy sit on the couch and wonder when leads are going to come in. Love it, love it. So there's two things I want to talk about from just that from what you just mentioned there. It's like number one, why stay away from personal injury lawyers? I'm curious because I just well, it, I don't stay me. <laughs> no, I don't stay away from them, but I I make them niche down. Don't come to me and try to make me rank your 16 services. You know, oh. pick the ones that you want to make. You know, okay, you know, okay, okay. Car accidents. You know, but don't go after dog bites. Don't go after. Don't go after the services that you have on your website that you're really not going to make any money on. You're not going to make any money on a dog. Oh. You know, so, you know, so I try to, you can, I'll, I'll take on lawyers, but mm -hmm. we're going to niche it down as far as what we're going to market, as far as what you're going to pay for market. You can market anything, but what mm -hmm. you're going to pay for marketing, you know, I want to go after the, the ROI stuff. I want to go after mm -hmm. construction accidents, auto accidents, you know, um, workers, you know, workers comps type stuff, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. That's, you know, not necessarily easy, but it's, you can make money on it that way. A lawyer can. So you know, if a lawyer goes after medical malpractice and dog bites and all the other stuff they do, you know, they might make a little bit of money or they might make nothing, especially when you're dealing with like medical malpractice. It's got it. It's usually Got a big it. ticket at the end, but that end could take 10 years. 
So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, yeah. I wish I spoke to you earlier because I agreed to optimize for all their services. All right. Well, there's another second part to that um, that you're talking about was um, white labeling. No one actually talked about white labeling on the show before. And so how does that work? Like, how do you how does someone white label your services? Well, basically, the, the biggest problem with white label is most people don't charge enough money. You know, most people are still charging six, seven, eight hundred bucks a month for SEO. Okay. And I, you know, you can't hire anybody to help you at that stage. And and I tell people all day long, you'll lose money at that. If you're doing SEO right, you'll lose money at that. You know, mm -hmm. you've got to get up to where you're, you know, like my minimum is about two grand a month. Mm -hmm. And that's that's just barely to get me out of bed and work for a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. so just because I understand the hard costs, because we all have hard costs, yep, if you're doing yep. it right, yep. you know, um, you know, you have staff, you have blog loaders, you have content writers, you have now more content editors, you know, so you have staff that's working on the project for you. So typically the white label works is I've got, you know, I've got one agency that he, they basically send me everything. So um, they just, you know, and I, it's anywhere from like 1500 bucks a month, I'll charge them and they'll charge the other client 2500 or 3000 or whatever they're charging. Mm -hmm. um, I have my reporting system that I actually put on their website. So I teach them how to, how to mm -hmm. teach them how to talk to the client, how to do the reporting and how to upsell every single month. You know, I upsell content almost every month. Um, because I, I'm such a big believer in content. And mm -hmm. that's like Matt talked about, about topical relevant content is mm -hmm. we do content clusters just like that. So got it. Got it. You know, those are the monthly phone call type of things, but yeah, it's a, uh, so the white label is cool because I get to, you know, help the agencies, you know, do better or whatever they want to do. They can do more sales and send it to me. Um, but like I said, yeah, the biggest problem is, is they'll send me a plumber for, you know, and they only charge in, you know, 800 bucks a month. Well, they're, I can't help you. <laughs> you know? yeah, so yeah. I might be able to sell you some links or something, but it's not going to, it's not going to be a, any type of deal that you're going to want to get into. Yeah, we gotta we gotta show you the money first before we get that going. All right, all right. So I yeah. wanted to get into um like into into what like the topic of the, of today, which was schema and siloing, and you know you kind of talked about clustering, uh, which you know we, I would love to talk about also. And so I mean I'm like like uh, I heard a story. Uh, I mean Ted talked about this on SEO fight um, SEO fight club all the time. Is that you ranked a page with schema only? Can you tell us this that story? I actually have an entire website ranked oh. for schema only. <laughs> Can you tell so us like, what's going on here? <laughs> including the main page, including service pages and local pages. Wow. So I have all of them ranking with just schema only website. There's no front page content. So just I use an old like like 2012 freaking WordPress theme. So it still has all the WordPress crap in the footer. Okay, okay, okay. But if you look at the schema, each page is about 3,000 words of content. Oh. So, Interesting. So, and if you do schema right, this is this is my thing about schema. If you do okay. schema right, you're basically building a second website. So, you know, when you think about it that way, when when you can build a when you can build a system with schema or whatever kind of code you want to call it, but um, the biggest thing is is it was a code that all the search engines invented themselves. It's the only code that all the search engines invented themselves. So they got all crawl it, mm -hmm. and they all understand it, and I personally believe that if your scheme is good enough, what's on your page doesn't matter because everything on your page should be in your schema. Yeah. If you have a video on the page, you should have video schema. If you have, you know, um, links on your page, you have those same links in your schema. You know, mm -hmm. I do siloing on the website and I also do siloing with inside the schema. So, yeah. you know, again, you think about it as a, as a bot would crawl and you see all the stuff that the schema has all the same as, you know, knows about all the mentions, all the abouts, all the different things about that page, because Schema mm -hmm. is a page only process, then Google and Yahoo and Bing have enough information about that page that do they really need to crawl the rest? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. But, you know, we're running tests right now to see if they do crawl it. I'll put a funky little keyword at the bottom in the public side and see if I rank that funky little keyword. Mm -hmm. But you know, I personally believe because one of our biggest challenges of SEOs is, the, is what's called crawl budget. Yeah. You know, we have very little time to kind of impress the robots and make sure they crawl the right things when they come because we don't know when they're going to come back again. You know, the old days of a bot crawling your site every single day are gone, mm -hmm. you know. So, 
you know, we've got to be able to impress the search engines enough that they're going to get everything they need in the milliseconds that we have to impress them. And I think schema is the key to that. So love that so i mean uh, so we kind of talked about like the why you know schema like works and cause because of the bots but i would like to go touch more upon on this what this web page websites that you got ranking because i mean like can you kind of go deep in and further like um what type of schema you're using let's say for the home page and then for some inner pages and like how does that structure kind of look like so like what's what kind of schema well, are you using um, yeah i mean one of the things that we that i teach is stacking schema so you have a site-wide okay. schema that your site-wide scheme is either like organization or professional service. Um, it's basically about the site. So, you know, it has the main nav system within the schema. Um, if you have, you know, mentions and abouts and knows abouts and same as is, you know, on the brand level, you know, so everything's the brand level on the, on the site-wide. So we don't get into much on the locations that we, that we practice. We don't get much on the, uh, the different, you know, except for the main services, we don't get into the city slash services from the site wide. So, so you have your site wide on every page, and then you go to your like web design page, and now you have your web design service schema. Again, very broad. We're not mentioning, you know, we're not mentioning cities at this point in the schema. Okay. So, so you have your site wide, you have your service schema, and then you have your local business schema. So local business on every single local page. But you have a map or not, you know, so my Phoenix web design page will have site wide web design schema, local business for Phoenix for Phoenix. And so, so you're, when you're stacking the schema, then you're providing all that information by the time that robot gets to that third level, that is very easy to understand what page they're on now. So, um, again, it's kind of like, and it's all siloed through the whole system. Yep. So. Like for instance, on the web design service page, the main one, I will mention the states because I do my siloing by states and then cities. Mm -hmm. So I will mention the states in the web design service schema. So I have an Arizona web design page, I have a Texas web design page, I have a California. And so I'll mention those in the web design service schema. And then the local business schema, I'll start with Arizona and then go into the cities. And so the then I'll interlink through schema, I'll interlink the Phoenix web design page to the Scottsdale web design page to the Mesa web design page, all the other Arizona pages within the schema. So that's the way I've created this web design state of Arizona schema system. So, um, and again, the reason why people don't do this is because it's a lot of freaking work, yep. <laughs> so, you know, even with my template, it's a lot of work. So, mm -hmm. um, but I'm a big believer that, yeah, it takes time, but you really only need to do it once. And and then the power is there. Now you just send links to the power. Damn! Man, you just laid off the blueprint right there. So I'm curious. You mentioned interlinking schema. How do you interlink schema? Well, because you have a URL. You have a URL in almost all the different schemas. So if I'm talking about um, like better, better, excuse me, better business bureau BBB is uh -huh. one of my awards that I have, then I actually have a URL link for my better business page on that in that little block of schema. Mm -hmm. Well, same thing, like in Phoenix, I get the wiki link for Phoenix, I get the productology link for Phoenix. And then I get I have a URL for Phoenix. And then I have a site URL for my web page in Phoenix. So, okay. so all of these links are inside the schema. So and they're all tied together. So um, and I personalize those. This is something else I do. So mm -hmm. like, um, I'll, like bank one ballpark, it's not called that anymore. That's where the diamondbacks play here in Phoenix. Okay. Well, I, I have season tickets to the diamondbacks. And so I'll use bank one ballpark as a geo geo relevant thing in my local business schema for Phoenix, but I'll tie that in into, you know, Salterra has season tickets to the Arizona diamondbacks at the stadium. We take many, you know, clients and investors to the Diamondbacks baseball game. So you know, we'll put all this stuff in that geo relevant kind of schema for the city of Phoenix. We usually put five to seven of those type of places. Mm -hmm. And then that just ties that thing even more into my brand. So, you know, and so you kind of think about it like one, again, one step further of, yeah, I can list, you know, all the main things, the Phoenix Zoo, all the stuff people do. Well, mm -hmm. I tie it in. You know, the Phoenix Zoo, you know, Terry and Elizabeth take their grandkids to the Phoenix Zoo. Yeah, I mean, so we tie it in within the schema. Mm -hmm. And that's the nice thing about it. You can do that. And 
And again, there's no SEO tool in the world that yeah. does this yeah. type of stuff because it can't. It's not going to be able to go out and get that much information that we do. Um, again, yeah, it's it's all tied. It's all personalized. It's all brought in about the brand. You know, the whole E E A T thing. Yeah, you yeah. know, experience, authority, trust. You know, all that stuff. And so we do a lot of that with schema. So, so when you mentioning like you know you have season tickets and stuff like that, that's not on your page it's actually in the schema only you don't talk about that it's like, only, only in the schema yep only in the ah. schema so i mean why do you think that's that would be i mean you thought you said it was important for eat but like how do you think that also helps like the search engines like make you make that more um make you more of an authority or like that like you know like a benefit well i think i think again like especially on the city page level and even the neighborhood page level mm -hmm. you really have to tie in not only where your brand fits into the scheme of things, but how the city fits into your brand. And so a lot of people do things to do in Phoenix. You know, we all have the bottom of the local pages that we've been building for years, you know, yeah. things to do close to yep. school, yep. you yeah. know, all that. that's all great stuff. That's yeah. awesome. You know, but in schema, it allows you to take it two or three more steps further, you know, to make sure that you can tie that page, that service into the city because mm -hmm. you can now personalize it. You know, you can't, you, you could probably do it on the public side, but it's probably going to look weird to yeah, yeah. Martha that wants to get a new website, you know, yep. but in the schema, I can do it all freaking day long and nobody's ever going to see it, you know, except the searching. Love that. So you'd say like, there's probably, there's probably more content on your ski. There's more schema content than your, what you have on your regular pages. Like, is that, that's almost oh, yeah. a guarantee. 100%. 100%. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So I'm curious, like, what are some schema, like markup that like, uh, that, you know, we have all the same as, you know, there's all this stuff that people will always use, but is there some like schema that you, you typically would use that, you know, that not everyone else is using? Um, I don't think it's as much as not everybody else is using. They're just not using it either enough or properly. Okay. I mean, in my opinion, the most important scheme is the same as okay. the same as is because like if you do a search for Terry Samuels SEO, yeah. Um, last time I searched, there's like seven hundred thousand plus results. Well, mm -hmm. that's all stuff about me and SEO. Mm -hmm. Well, schema mm -hmm. is the idea to bring all those important things into my page. For instance, you know, same mm -hmm. with a lawyer or whatever. So you know, and so now you have same as because now I can list all the podcasts I've been on, all the videos, YouTube videos I've been on. I can list your, your podcast, all this stuff is same as, and, okay. and now Google and Yahoo and Bing and the search engines don't have to go to all these different pages to find all that stuff. I just made it easier for them to find everything that I want them to know about me mm -hmm. on one page in one spot. So, um, same with citations, you know, I tell people your organization or your site wide schema is different for your homepage. Your homepage is a separate schema. Because of all the citations you've built for your brand, all the different IFTT brand rings, all the different mm -hmm. Google stacks you've built for your brand, all those are same as. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your homepage that you have all these citations and links for, list every freaking one of them. You know, I have mm -hmm. 600 freaking citations and all different links that I've built through my brands over the years, all on my homepage schema. Ah. So Google doesn't have to go out and search for it. You know, yep. if I if I won an award three years ago and it's on page five now, well, guess what? It's in my schema. Mm -hmm. I don't give a shit what page it's on because I brought it in anyway. I'd like that award. I that award was great. I was proud of that award. So mm -hmm. why not keep it on my homepage schema as the same as and just let it replicate the whole way through? You know, so um, and that's what that's what you know. A lot of people miss that part. You know, oh. and again, that's stuff the tools can't do. Yep. A tool is not going to go out and find all my citations for Salterra. Yep. They're just not going to do it, you know. Um, but it's my job or my staff's jobs to go out and find all the mm -hmm. stuff. And and we have found negative stuff. We found one of the lawyers I did schema mm -hmm. for, we found out one of their lawyers had been disbarred a year before. Oh. We found that through research on this lawyer. Mm -hmm. This The mm -hmm. owner that hired me to do this had no idea. This guy mm -hmm. was hired by a, I guess, one of those headhunter companies or whatever. Mm -hmm. But he, he, he investigated it and found out that, yep, this guy hasn't had a license in California in like 17 months. And he would, nobody ever would have known that unless my staff did some research. Yep. You know? yep. So you know, we don't find those very often, obviously. Yep. But 
you know, but we do find stuff that people don't, you know, especially when you get into professionals, you find out where they went to college, what teams yeah. were they on, you know, were they part of the debate club? I mean, you find out all this stuff and you put it in their same as and about mm -hmm. their nose abouts and all the different schema because th they might not want it on their page because, mm -hmm. you know, what was a lawyer page being, you know, he's, he's on the rowing team. Well, guess yeah. what? Google wants it. Google will eat that stuff up, you know, so why not put it in the schema? You know, so schema is also good for misspelled words. Marijuana is one of the most misspelled words on the planet. Oh, you can't do a whole bunch of misspelled words on the public side of the page because you look like a stoner. Yeah. Put them in, the, you know, put the misspelled words in the schema in paragraphs, you know, and so now you're getting credit and rankings for the misspelled words. Excellent. So I mean, <laughs> so I'm curious on the misspelled the misspellings. I mean, how are you putting that in the misspellings? It's not is it, it's not same as or is it same as? Like what? How no, you no, it? we're in the in the description and by um, the ambiguous description, the two big description areas within schema. Uh -huh. We don't we don't put the same text on the page in the schema. We want to put new um, content in the schema. So right. where it says marijuana normally spelled on the front page it'll be marijuana misspelled oh, on the schema. got it got so it got it it's just in a sentence paragraph structure like normal so love that you just mix up all those different misspelled words within that schema so the same with photography sites photography sites love schema because now they can just have images all over the place like photographers like mm -hmm. now the schemas in there explaining the image and getting all the stuff they need to rank for and all the stuff that we do Man, I wonder where schema was when we had flash websites, right? I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, back in the days we had to just change the color of the background to put our our, our text in there for our flash sites. Exactly. Oh man, love that, love that. Okay, so um, with 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 that, you mentioned the template. Even with your templates, that you said people, and it's still pretty hard. So, like, do you where can people find your template on on the schema? Um. You know, it's, I give them away typically, um, you know, to my conference people, okay. um, my VIPs, you know, obviously people that hire me. I, I do a lot of the schema only white hat. So a lot of people will hire me just to do their schema. Mm -hmm. And then I'll give them all the templates when we're done and they can, you know, update them in the future or whatever they need to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, I don't sell them, but I, there's a lot of them out there, obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and people class here. Okay. Um, after that, I got, I'm speaking at so many events in the next three or four months, I'm probably going to do it in the fall, but I love teaching this stuff and I love, you know, helping people to do it. It's just the problem that people have, like I said, is it's just, it takes so much time, yep. you know, I mean, it, it, when, uh, when we, uh, one lawyer I was talking about, he had 17 lawyers. It took us three weeks just to do the research before we even touched schema. Oh. So just to get the research ready. So we do research on the brand we do mm -hmm. research on the services we do research on the locations and then we do research on the individual lawyers mm -hmm. um for like medical we'll do research on the individual doctors you know um plumbers and roofers we typically only do research on the owners we typically don't do anything else so um but yeah it's you know like i said that's the biggest thing I, i've actually handed people my templates and i they haven't done anything with them you know, oh man <laughs> Yeah. all right emmanuel says great nuggets here great nuggets yes yes sir great nuggets so i'm thinking okay so i mean you give your template out just to you know like for you know certain certain people or whatever but i mean i think if, you, if you're if we if we understand you correctly we can look at your site right now right and kind of like kind of learn off that just kind of analyzing the Tara website is that like how we yeah. can love that yeah yeah you can you can do that um you know right now and i tell people this all the time that is actually my testing site also okay um the main reason we use my main site is because it's a very powerful site and we can see testing results very quickly mm -hmm. we don't have to wait three or four weeks to see if something works or didn't work mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact when i was just doing class this tuesday we found a page they did a test on and it failed i mean i lost probably 40 keywords in about oh. three weeks on an inside page so some of the stuff that we test, you know, is very important to, you know, here's again, we test so much. When you find a good test, how do you implement it? Yeah. How do you go back and say, hey, guys, add all this to your schema templates and all this stuff. So yeah. we're actually now starting a process of keeping track of who we give our templates to. So when the team does find stuff that works or yeah. something that's even better, we can update everybody at the same time. So to keep track of just making sure that, and again, 
they're not doing anything with it, which is kind of comical. <laughs> oh, yeah. but, um, but it is it is something that you know I, I have no problem helping. I've had people. I had a guy message me two days ago wanted a lawyer template. Um, mm -hmm. I was able to you know work out a deal with them to give them a lawyer template. You know, so that's not a big deal. But like I said, I just don't want to. Yeah, but yeah, you can definitely check my site out. But when you want to go to my site, I do have pages that I have schema shut off on because I'm doing another mm. A-B test. So just don't email me or message me saying, hey, man, you don't have any schema on this page. <laughs> You're right, I don't. <laughs> so, love yeah. that. Love yeah, that. Yeah, you, you can definitely go and see it. Okay, so uh, Emmanuel asks, can you share the name of the site, please? And this is, is this Altera? Is this Altera.com? Yeah, this is Sal yeah, SalteraSite.com. SalteraSite.com. Salter Okay, salterasite.com, guys. So be sure if you want to analyze what he's doing, um, be sure to check out his website. And uh, I'm curious, you know, you kind of mentioned this, that you did a test and it did, and you kind of knocked out some keywords. Can you kind of share that test so we can cut on that? Well, yeah, we, um, because the one thing you got to remember, too, with schema is if you put the wrong schema on the wrong page, it can have an adverse effect. Ah. So, you know, if you put plumber schema on a roofer page yeah all of a sudden now google's confused as crap because mm. now they're going to start taking away some of the roofing terms that you're rank ranking for because now google's just kind of whacked now so mm. and that's what happened they actually put some of my uh, some of uh. seo on web design pages so i lost some web design keywords so um it's actually something you really have to pay attention to I've even got uh -huh. people out there. I rank on their website because they never changed my schema. Mm -hmm. They didn't take my brand out of, out of my one of my templates. And now all of a sudden, my brand is ranking on their key terms. And they get, they message me and say, why would you be ranking? I say, because my <laughs> name's in your schema somewhere. Yeah, you need yeah. to find out where Salterra is in that schema and change it to your brand. Because it's yeah. Google doesn't get like that. They they do that because they saw something. Yeah. So. You know, I got Jordan Pierce ranks on one of my sites that I test with because he's a, he's in my review schema. Uh -huh. He's not mentioned anywhere else in the whole site except the review schema, and he's like on the third page on that website. <laughs> so, oh man! Yeah, yeah you can. You can miss it. So, um, so I'm curious. Um, uh, we, okay, so what's the spelling of the site? So it's Saltera. S A L T E R R A. Yeah, here I'll, I'll put it in our chat. Okay, yeah, so let me, uh, you guys, it's going to be Saltera site. Yeah. Make sure. So, um, if, so I'm curious with, um, is it, yeah, this, this is Saltera site. I'm just putting this in the YouTube chat. Okay, so we have a question here from Jeremy. Oh, actually, uh, Emmanuel had one more question, and he meant he's asked, uh, what tool do you use to create schema markups? Are you using like any tool to help you? You don't. I don't know. Um, we built templates by going to schema.org and just basically scraping templates to see what could we include in what type of schema. So mm -hmm. that's how we got started. Um, there is some software out there. I've scraped people's schema at the mm -hmm. very beginning. So mm -hmm. like um, Project Supremacy V3, which I think is Indigo. I can't remember their new name. But um, they had a tool that would scrape a site schema. So I got a lot of ideas from what other people were doing, especially new sites. Mm -hmm. um, new sites were probably the first ones that we saw using schema pretty heavily. Um, you know, on a more automated system, it's not custom like we do nowadays, but mm -hmm. we were able to, we were able to get a lot of ideas of what you can include in certain types of schema because of those type of projects. So, but right now, yeah, we don't use any tools. Um, you know, there's some people out there that uh, people will send me their schema tools to test and see. Mm -hmm. And like I said, they're, there's, they're great tools. Like Clint Butler's training out there is the best training that's out there on schema right now. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and Clint, Clint's adamant about it. You, it, no tool will do the research. That's the Got challenge. It. So, and you can't really take a custom schema and work it into rank math or work it into mm -hmm. SEO press. Yep. So. Um, you know, we, we use SEO press pro that's our yep. agency's SEO tool. So, um, but we turn off all the schema. So, and we use header further code manager to install the schema mm -hmm. so we can make sure and dictate which page gets what schema. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, that way, cause all the web design pages get the web design service schema, you know, so stuff like that. So, um, and then we have tag and category schema for our blog posts. Love that. So, okay. I mean, Manuel says here that the uh, technical SEO schema tool, what do you think? That's, 
I believe that's yeah. Uh, Darren Shaw was talking about that earlier in the in the show. Uh, technical SEO. I mean, that's more like basic stuff, right? And that, people can use that. Generally. Yeah, it, 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 it's all it's all basic stuff. Like I said, you know, um, that one little video you showed. Yeah, there's there, all the tools will let you do same as and add your social platforms and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. if you're adding a hundred of those mm-hmm. and you're using a kind of that tool to do, <laughs> you're going to be clicking a lot of freaking buttons. You yeah, know, yeah. so. Um, and again, there's nothing wrong with those tools that mm-hmm. they just, they don't, I've never seen a tool yet that will rank a website with, with nothing else on it. That's the, that's the whole idea. So, you know, they all try to do as best they can. And if people ask me what's the best out there of any of them, um, I don't really have an answer. You know, mm-hmm. rank, I used to love rank math until rank math throws in all what I call junk schema, mm-hmm. you know, the WP footer, WP header. Google doesn't need do they don't give a crap about that schema. You know, that schema doesn't mean yeah, you got a header and a footer. I hope so. It's a website. Every website has a header and footer. You know, so um and WP nav. Well, put your nav bar in your freaking in your main schema and it's just you know, so I, again, I'm not faulting tools. It's just the ideas of don't expect the tools to do everything you need to do what we do with schema. Love it, love it. All right, we had a, we had a comment here from um, uh, Ca- Cameron. Hi, Terry. Thanks for sharing the wisdom. And he asks, what do you recommend to combine multiple schemas? Well, and you can do there's a couple different ways. You can do that with the ad ID. You know, the ad IDs will combine schemas. So, mm-hmm. um, like local wow. business and professional service and organization are kind of the same. Okay. So you can you can like on a local page, it's not uncommon to see organization slash local business because we've combined those two schemas together. So got it. Um, mm-hmm. where you got to be careful with that, though, is you can't have the same description in two different schemas. You can't have the same, you know, deambiguous mm-hmm. description in two different schemas. So you will get you will get warnings or not an error, but you will get warnings when you start if if you start stacking that way and not paying attention. So. Mm-hmm. That's why we do separate schemas. So we'll have a separate site wide. We'll have a separate service and a separate local business. So got it. Um, and we've tested combining them all through the ad ID. Didn't see much difference. It just seemed like more of a pain in the butt for the staff rather than saying, "Hey, here's the web design service. It goes on all these web design pages." And that's pretty simple for when you start doing it. So same with you get into ecom. Like I get ecom. I have a bunch of affiliate sites and. Ecom's a whole different animal when it comes to schema. So you really have to set your schema up that it's being called out by tags, by categories, you know, by brands. You know, ecom is all brands typically. Yeah. So, yep. um, and it's but you can call them out quicker. So if you have a thousand product website or a five thousand product website, you call out that schema for those pages with tags, with categories. And you can do that through the header footer code manager. Got it. And this header footer code manager, this is within SEO press pro. Yeah, no, it's, it's within oh. just an SEO. It's in the uh, WordPress dispository. Oh. It's a free, okay. it's a free thing. So, um, I've been using it for years because that's where I put my script. Uh, you can put script files up there on different pages for, mm-hmm. you know, I do a lot of iframe stuff so I can put the iframe stuff just on the page I need. Got it. Got it. So you mentioned, um, you mentioned, uh, oh man, I just lost my train of thought. By the way, let's get Jeremy. Jeremy uh, asked a question here. He goes, um, Terry, for new clients, do you build sites from the ground up or use WordPress or etc. or both? Um, yeah, we only use WordPress now. Um, like I said, when I started, I was HTML, CSS. It would take me, you know, two and a half months to build a freaking website. And one of my developers says, You better get your ass over to WordPress or you're going to be broke. So. <laughs> So we, we do everything in WordPress. Now we use the same theme, same plugins on every single website that we do. So, um, Elizabeth averages between 150 to 180 websites a year. Um, and they're all built wow. with SEO in mind. So, wow. um, even if they don't go with us for SEO, their sites are ready for it already. So, Got you it. know, it's. And so that's one of the things that I do is, you know, just making sure that it's built right. Cause I, I, we all get websites that we cannot freaking work with. We all get them. And it's probably one of the most frustrating things in our business is working with a website that is just freaking terrible. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so that's one of the criteria is when I look at taking somebody on, you know, what is the website, you know, mm-hmm. how is it going to function? You know, so, 
Um, how is my staff going to function in it more importantly? You know, so my SOPs are built around one theme, one set of plugins, you know, and all the different variables, Divi, like I won't even do a Divi set. <laughs> so, but, you know, if he got thrown into my SOP system with my staff, they'd be freaking screaming at me yep. because it's it doesn't work the same as what we do. Got it. Got it. Out. Love that, Jeremy. Hopefully that happens answers your question there. So, man, I can't believe we're already at time, but I want I want to sneak this question in here. And anyone, if you have any quick questions that you want to ask, go ahead and ask them now. Uh, but there's one quite I mean, I want to talk I wanted to talk a little bit more about siloing. And because I mean this is something that you also specialize in and you actually talk about clustering. Um I mean, if there's just like that within like, you know, you can explain this in a couple of minutes, some best practices on like siloing your content or clustering, what, whatever, what that is, you know, for people to get going on creating that perfect silo. Uh, what would that um, be? The, the, well, the, to the biggest things to think about a silo is think about um, navigating a user through the process. So if I come, if somebody comes to Solterra and they need a new website, they don't even know what SEO is yet. They don't even know what internet marketing is. They don't even know what software development is. So I want to keep them all within the website funnel. So matter of fact, if you guys click around my site and you go to my homepage and click on web design, you'll notice my nav bar even changes to nothing but website stuff. You can't go to the SEO pages from my web design pages. You can't go to the internet. Oh, pages. you're right. My pages. So, I have a strict silo that I've, that oh, I've designed in, in websites because I want to direct the traffic, not only of the users, I also want to direct the traffic of the Google bot and the Yahoo bot and all the different bots. So, oh. you know, and so I don't, you know, I don't interlink and the blog posts. We will blog posts. If I'm doing a blog about the benefits of using WordPress for SEO, I will mention, you know, WordPress web design and SEO in the same blog. But on our pages and our page content, we stay very strict with the siloing structure. So. Oh, guys, there's a big knowledge bomb right there. That I've never seen this done or even heard of people doing it. But it's like you actually change the nav on, on your homepage when people click on certain no homepage links, right? It's like yep. it's web design. Then you're talking, you talk about the e-commerce sites and then AD compliance sites. And then if you click on SEO, it talks about local, national e-com. So it actually changes. And I'm, I mean, if this is, you can't really, can you do this on a WordPress site? I mean, is this something that yeah. you can? Well, okay. Yeah, well, again, it depends on the theme. You know, okay. our, one of the reasons we love, and it's the Aveda theme. I love the Aveda theme. The Aveda theme gives us opportunity to have, I can have different footers, different navs, different sidebars on oh. every single page at the page level. Uh -huh. So there's no special code in it. So okay. each page at, at the very bottom in the tools, I can select which nav bar I want for this page, which footer I want, which header. I, if it's a landing page, I take all the all the nav out of it anyways, because I don't want them leaving my landing page. So mm -hmm. Aveda lets us do that. And it was the reason we chose Aveda was mainly because of the SEO stuff we could do like this. Wait, that Aveda. Other things you would have to do some custom coding and everything else to even get it to do that. So Aveda, how can you spell that? So for people to kind of check it out. A-D-A-D-A. Okay. Okay. So it's a, it's a theme. It's by Envato, uh, those theme forests. Yeah. Type, uh, yeah ah. it's, I think it, at one time it's the largest theme and it's the largest theme in WordPress. Yeah. Almost has like um, close to 900,000 sales here. Oh man, I'm gonna check that out. Wow, man, yeah. another dog bomb for that one, guys. All right, so we're at we're at time, guys. Oh man, so much knowledge bombs today. I want to ask you the last question to ask all my SEO professionals to come on here. If someone want, wanted to get into the SEO game, become an SEO professional, what would your advice be to them? Um, test, build your own site, rank it. You know, learn how to learn learn the ins and outs of it. It don't. <laughs> I hate this. Don't spend too much time in SEO groups. I think SEO Facebook groups right now are damaging people more than they're helping people. So um, find people to follow. That's the way we all learn that have been in this business a long time. I still follow Rand Fishkin. I still follow Brad and Matt Callen. You know, I still follow these guys, even though they might not be doing the same stuff they were doing before. But um, and then get your butt to conferences and start intermingling and networking with people. You know, networking. And, and it's no joke. The net worth is, is your freaking ticket in this business. You know, I can reach out to anybody anytime with a question and not and, and be reliable on the answer. Mm -hmm. And it's just because of the networking, because the willingness to help, the willingness to teach. And if somebody somebody teaches you something, implement it, you know, mm -hmm. test it, implement it, you know, find find new ways to do stuff. You know, on page, you know, I 
I do so much with on-page and on-page testing because I just get a wild hair at my butt and I implement it and see if it works. If it doesn't, I change it back. I mean, so, yeah. You know, that's what you kind of have to do. And when you start looking at, you know, another thing you'll see on my site, real last quick tidbit, mm -hmm. if you look at my sidebars now, my sidebars say, why trust Saltera? Yeah, yeah. That word trust is huge. It used to say about Saltera. You know, oh. well, now, oh. when you talk oh. about your page and who you are it's why trust us why why rely on us do you use those eat words that mm -hmm. google's looking for you mm -hmm. know and make yourself more authoritative you know more branded you know and more relevant by using those type of words and again it was a mm -hmm. test we ran and my gosh it just freaking exploded so just oh. that one <laughs> Man, yeah. it's still dropping knowledge bombs at the end of the show. Love that guy. So use the use the um, eat words instead, and watch your freaking rankings just crawl up. Um, so we have one. Uh, Emmanuel sneaked in one quick question before I let you go. Schema markups give you an edge over your competitors, right? Oh yeah, big time. <laughs> yeah, because ninety nine percent of them are just using Yoast or Rank Math or everything else. So you take the time and do detailed, advanced schema. You're going to knock people out. Love and it, cool love it. Is, the cool thing is, is they're not going to be able to figure out how. Yep. Most SEOs don't look at other people's schema. Love they look that. At links, they look at on page, you know, all mm. this different stuff. So. Again, dropping all these knowledge bombs. So for this episode to feel complete for you, how can people get a hold of you? Please, the stage is yours. Um, Salterasite.com is the fastest way. You can reach me on Facebook. Um, and then Skype is my uh, Saltera Web is my Skype call. Um, mm -hmm. Again, I love helping people. Um, you know, I'll, you know, we're having two masterminds again this year, and then another, another big event in April for spring training. So, mm -hmm. yeah, friend me on Facebook. You know, you can keep track of all the stuff that we do. Um, but yeah, get yourself out there and you know, learn from people that are actually doing this stuff. Yes, yes, everyone. And, and I'm actually, I'm, I, I know we have two minutes left, but um, we're actually in past. But I mean, your masterminds, I actually did not know, know about that until just, you know, when I was doing some research when I was running your bio. So what is the masterminds about? What's, you know, like, how's that work? Yeah, the masterminds are typically 25 or 30 people. Okay. They're an all inclusive thing. So we typically will get a, um, a bed and breakfast, a large house, a small boutique hotel. Oh, okay. um, and it'll just be hanging out. You know, having some, you know, knowledge bombs, nothing's recorded, nothing's pitched. It's just, you know, 25, 30 people hanging out and having a blast. It's all included. Food's included. Rooms are included. Um, so there's no stress about any of that stuff. But it is a little bit different environment than um, because it's pretty, it's not for basic SEOs. Yeah. The masterminds are, you know, if you're brand new to SEO, the masterminds might confuse you a bit. So. Mm -hmm. But we do, we have some that are just tech only. So we'll get a bunch of people that just do a bunch of stuff with the technical side. And then I've done link building masterminds before um, to teach people how to different link build and bring in the people that do the link building. You know, so the, so the big difference is, is it's more, it's more centrally topic located. Um, and we do them all over the place. So I think we're looking at San Diego in July and then we're looking at, you know, up. Um, Rockstar, I think this year is going to be in Boston. So we'll probably do something September, October time frame up in the East Coast. Love it. Everyone, give a round of applause. Thank you, Thank Terry. You for having man. Me. Man, you dropped so much knowledge bombs. I'm going to actually, oh man, I can't wait to rewatch this episode and kind of really, really hone in into my schema. Uh, can you hold on for one quick second while I sign off here? Hold on for one quick second. For sure. All right, guys, that concludes another episode of the SEO video show. And boy, was that jam packed with a bunch of SEO knowledge bombs there. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I will see you next week, guys. Peace out. Thank you for watching. Hope you come back next week. Make sure to subscribe. You don't want to miss a thing. Hope you learn something new because the vibe is incredible. From the special SEO professionals, SEO video show. Let's work. Want to see you be an SEO expert. Paul Andre DeVera helping you step it up. No delay right now. Time to level up. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Woo!